And now, in cooperation with police and federal law enforcement departments throughout the United States, the only national program that brings you authentic police case history. Tonight, the case of the horse race hijackers who found a bulletproof racket to rob Peter without paying Paul, but who learned too late that the law itself is bulletproof. And now to gangbusters and facts that show the operation of our law enforcement officials in their war against the underworld. Gangbusters has asked John J. Sullivan, former chief of detectives and deputy police, to narrate by proxy tonight's case. The inside facts in the case of the horse race hijackers. Commissioner Sullivan, I know the gang you're going to tell us about tonight was one of the most troublesome the New York City police have run up against in recent years. That's right, Don. Detectives in Brooklyn had a difficult time. Although they suspected numerous crimes were being committed by this gang, there was never so much as a complaint from a victim. No complaints? That sounds odd. Suppose you tell us about it, Commissioner. Well, Don, I think it would be best to start last summer. On a side street in the busy Flatbush section of Brooklyn, there was a small delicatessen store. One morning, as the proprietor was about finished waiting on one customer, another man opened the door and walked in. Hiya, Gus. Oh, oh. Yeah, I'll be with you in a moment, Rico. Then I get through with the customer. Yeah, take your time, Gus. Uh, see, Mr. Beer, cheese, salt, anything else? No, that's all right now. Sixty and twenty is eighty and twelve is ninety-two. Yeah, ninety-two. Oh, excuse me a minute. Yes, go ahead. Gus Delicatessen, Gus talking. Hello, Gus, it's Mrs. Stanchek. Oh, hold the phone Look, a minute, Mrs. Stanchek. I got a customer. Oh, okay, Gus. Well, here's your door, Mister. Uh, ninety-two cents, right? So long, come again. Yeah, I'll come again soon. Another minute, there you go. Okay. The customer on the phone. I got plenty of time, Gus. Uh, look, Gus, I'll tell you what I want. Yeah? Uh, give me two to win and two to show on Pelican in the fort, the Jamaica. Pelican 202. Yeah. Anything else, Mrs. Dentrick? Yeah, throw in a two-buck bet for me on the blue and gold entry in the seventh, will you? I got it, okay. Right, I'll talk to you tomorrow, Gus. Okay. Ah, uh, Rico, bet I should stick to the delicatessen business. Just taking bets on the ponies is getting down my nerves. You're going to complain, Gus. You get all the gravy and none of the risk. None of the risk? All I can see is cops, cops. I thought even the customer just now was a cop. Every time that door opens, I get a feeling it's a law. The law is hot on us. I don't want no law. So what? A little pinch, a little fine. You don't even have to pay that. We pay it for you. I tell you, you're riding a gravy train. Yeah, maybe. But someday I'm going to wake up and find a skunk in the caboose. All right, then quit. Who's stopping you? Well, Rico, the money is easy, all right. Well, what are you complaining then? Let's see your sheets. I got them all ready for you. We had a good week, a lot of bets. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not bad, Gus. Not bad. The boss will like this. And here's the cash take. You got your percentage out? Not now. 20, 40, 50, 80. Put it away, Rico. It's coming, somebody. Yeah. Oh, it's him. That same fellow. He's back. Well, I told you, cops, Rico. What do we... Quiet, Gus. Now, take a look at whatever you put in your pocket. You got no right to look at anything. Please, gentlemen, my store... Shut up, I... you. You're in enough trouble already. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come on, hand it over. You'll need a warrant, copper. Copper? Do we look uh... like cops? Hey, what is this? What's it look like? It's a heist. Get what's on him, pal. Now, uh, look, you guys, you're going to get in trouble. Don't move, Rico. Please, my... That's enough out of you, too. Here we are, boss, all his collections. Now, let's go. What about the cash register? Oh, no. Forget it. It's not in our line. Oh, boy. Forget it. Right. Don't either of you move for five minutes. Remember. Come on. Hold on, boys. Rico, I quit. I got to quit. Ordinary hold-up men is bad enough, but hijackers means big trouble. Shut up. And keep quiet about this, Gus, until I talk to the boss. If any mob thinks they can get away with hijacking us, they're nuts. That incident, Don, in a Brooklyn delicatessen store whose proprietor had a sideline of taking bets on horse races started off a series of events which together make tonight's case. Whenever one gang of criminals fights another, the job of the police is extremely difficult. Horse race betting away from the track is a crime and is carried on undercover by racketeers and gamblers. 
These big shots manage to keep themselves far away from the actual transaction of the bet, and thus can seldom be touched by law enforcement officers. When a situation such as this hijacking arises, naturally the racketeers will not report it to the police. They prefer to handle it in their own way, as you'll see. But the hijackers also had plans, and they were discussing them in a tavern a few hours after their first job. Hey, Hill, you still got to sell me. Maybe, maybe we were just lucky. Well, you have to make up your mind, Luke. In or out. There's a sense the way we handled that job in a delicatessen store this morning. We can repeat the same thing a hundred times. Yeah, but you know what I'm worried about. Those cookies are tough if they want to be. They got all kinds of muscle, men. We can't go around knocking over their collectors without getting the big shots peed. Yeah, I'd let them get paid. As long as we don't have cop trouble, I'm not excited. Yeah, that's another thing. What makes you so sure the cops won't stick their nose in, huh? Yeah, use your head, Luke. If you were taking bets on the horses, would you run into the cops should some hijack your money at collectors? Nah, not in your life you wouldn't. The cops would throw you in a can sooner than look at you. Uh, okay, we'll try it until something better turns up. What could be better? This is the safest pitch in the world. A few weeks' work, make us a rich bunch of boys. And we're out of beef for the law from the gamblers. That's all. Just a few weeks' work. Now, let's get to it. Oh, uh, now, look, boss. Now, could I help with the gummy tag? That's all. Once I can understand, Vigo, but getting hijacked three times in a month ain't fun anymore. You talk like I was the only one getting took. They're not going to run us from every bookie in town. Yeah, things are bad all over. Here's a glass of beer for you, Rigo. Yeah, thanks. You keep your nose out of this, Stella. Look, Rigo, I'm telling you once and for all... This has got to stop. All right, then, look, Gray, how about give me a little protection? You're no baby. Stop packing a heater yourself. Be reasonable, will you, Gray? There was four of them last time. Besides, I never used a gun before. It's easy. Just be careful not to point it at people you like. Go on, Rigo Scram. Well, what are we going to do, Gray? Go on, get those collections in. Look, Gray. Yeah? You were kidding about me packing a gun, huh? Yeah, forget it. Go on, collect it, though. Sure, Gray, sure. And be careful. I'll check with you later. Don't say it, Stella, don't say it. Who said I was going to say something? Well, you were thinking it. What a spot to be in. Oh, why don't you stop yapping and do something about it? Yeah, yeah, get me the police commissioner on the phone. I want to register a complaint. Well, if I were you, I... Well, you're not me. But go ahead. Okay. Look, there must be a dozen bookmakers like you losing a bundle of dough every week. So? So? So why don't you all get together? You know, e pluribus unum. With those jumps? Hey. Or didn't you ever hear of a trade association where all the competitors get together for the mutual benefit of the industry? Uh, I hate to say so, Stella, but maybe you got an idea. See? Mention the word mutual and already you're interested. Yeah, maybe between us we can round up enough heat to scare those hijackers off. Yeah, think I'll call Burley and the Gimp. This is something they ought to be real glad to hear. Division, Lieutenant O'Rourke. Hello, Lieutenant. Sergeant Martin. Oh, yes, Sergeant. I just picked up a piece of information. Yes? Seems our friend Gray and Burley and the Gimp, plus a few other big shot bookies, had a meeting last night. Well, that must be on the hijacking of their collectors. I wouldn't be surprised. This guy told me they're going to take some action. All right, I've been expecting it, Sergeant. You know, I wish we could take some action. No, I don't see how we can yet. We have no report that there have been robberies. Everything we know, we know unofficially. When the time comes, we'll move in. I hope that guy has as much on him now as last time, Cable. We'll see in a minute. Now, run his car into the curb, right? Hold on. Come on, let's take it. Hey, what's the idea? Come on, get out of there. Hey, listen, you guys. I want that dough. Come on, get out. Hey, hey, we go. Hey, what you what's like the pal? Another cop. Yeah, I see it. Come on, back the car. Gorilla, I'm going to show you. All right, give it back to him. Let's get out of here. Yeah, right with you. Down, as the police had feared, open warfare broke out between the syndicate of racehorse bookmakers and the gangsters who were hijacking their collectors and messengers. Now, with or without a complaint from the victims, it was the job of the police to bring the situation to a head. Now, back to gangbusters. 
You were telling us, Commissioner Sullivan, how strong are men employed by the horse race gambling syndicate and the bandits who were hijacking the gambler's messengers engaged in a gun battle on a Brooklyn street. That's right, John. And within seconds after the shooting fray, members of both parties had fled the scene. Fortunately, no one was injured. By the time Lieutenant Frank O'Rourke, head of the squad of detectives assigned to investigate the rumored hijackings, arrived on the scene, a large crowd had gathered. Brooklyn must be here, Lieutenant. Any witness have a description of these men? No. Nobody could say what any of them looked like. Most of the people on the sidewalk even thought the men in the second car might have been police officers. Uh, what do you make of it, Lieutenant? Go out and pick up Gray. I want to talk to him. Ah. Uh, then you think the bookies' gorillas jumped up the hijackers, huh? Yeah, maybe. One thing I do know, I don't want anything like this to happen again. All right, Lieutenant. I'll see if I can find Gray for you. I think I know where I can put my hand on him. Good. When I get through with Gray, I think he'll be glad to help us find those hijackers. Okay, Hill, I ditched the car. What do you want, Luke? A medal? What's eating you? What do you think? Oh, now, look, you're not going to let a couple of muscle men scare us off. We can take care of ourselves. we got a sweet thing. We quit for a while. Oh, now, look. I hey, thought look. you were the guy who had to be sold on this deal. Yeah, yeah, but now that it's gone, it's okay. I like it fine. We still quit. Oh, now, look, we figured this would happen sooner or later. All right, so it happened soon. That's enough. We quit. But nothing so sweet will come along for a second. Forget it. I just parked it at the curb over on Beverly Road. <sighs> you know what? There were five slugs in the back. Those guys shoot straight at my figure. I know they can shoot straight. That's why we're laying off for a while. But we keep our eyes on those money runners. I've got an idea that if we relax, they relax. And as soon as the bookies take the gorillas off, we go back for more. Oh. Well, why didn't you say so? That's the way to do it. It's the only way to do it. Now go tell the boys what's cooking. I want them to stay around where I can get in touch. And in the fourth race, the change of jockeys on number six. China Plane, the jockey will be P. Ronson instead of Blake, as shown in your program. I don't want to go changing jockeys for a grade. Does that mean something? How should I know? Well, you ought to know. It don't make any difference who's up, Stella. The horse can't win. How do you know he can't win? He's got four legs like the rest. You don't figure that's all. Now, if you got a bet, look for something else in the race. Yeah? And somebody's looking for you. Huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, Gray. Taking a busman's holiday? Oh, wait, Copper. This is a private box. Yeah? Well, we've got a private box waiting for you downtown. Come on. Hey, now, wait a Shut minute. Up, Stella. What's the charge? We'll talk about it on the way downtown. Come on, Stella. Call my lawyer. Hey, you can't leave me here alone. Maybe you'd like to come along, too. Well, since you put it that way. Let's go, Gray. The lieutenant's waiting. Ah, okay. the horses for the fourth race. The purple stakes for fillies and mares, three years old and upward. At the conclusion of the 25th running of the purple stakes. Ah, hello, lieutenant. Hello, sergeant. Where have you got Gray? Well, he's still in the holdover cell, and he's burning. Let him burn. Come on, I want to see him. You know... I don't see what you're going to get out of Gray. He's not the talking type. Maybe he's not. It's the next cell. Hello, Gray. Been fixing any fights lately? Well, it's about time somebody showed up. Open up, Sergeant. All right. No, you're getting smart and turning me out, huh? Or did my lawyer show up with a writ already? Neither, Gray. I'm just coming in for a little chat. Now, wait a minute. We got nothing to talk about. Haven't we? No. And you got nothing to hold me on either. I want out of here right now. Okay. As soon as you make a formal complaint on those robberies. I don't know anything about any robberies. You know all about them. Let's get this straight. It doesn't make any difference who the victim is. Robbery is still robbery. And it's my job to clear it up. Look, Copper, it's bad enough I'm in here. I don't need a lecture. Well, you're getting one, Gray. 
And it's too bad we can't hook you and all the guys like you instead of some storekeeper who's taking bets for you. Someday we'll get through that cover you've got. Yeah, yeah, maybe. But right now, I want Ari. Perhaps after I hear all about those hijackings. Not on your life, bud. I give you a statement. I'm admitted and I'm making book. Handle this my own way. Look, Gray, I'm not going to stand for gun battles between a bunch of bums who don't give a hoot how many lives they take. If you're talking about that machine gun, Fracas, I don't know a thing. All right, Gray, you can rot in this cell until you tell me what you know. I don't scare so quick, Copper. My lawyer's on the way over with a writ. I'd be out of here in an hour. This time, yes. What do you mean, this time? Exactly this. I'm issuing orders to have you picked up every time you show your face on the street. I can't do that. Can't I? No, that's persecution. Not the way I look at it, Gray. I'll get this straight. I got my own way of taking care of such rats. I don't need no help from the law. All right, Gray, you asked for it. We'll see a lot of you around here. Hey, Lieutenant. Yes? Just a minute. Look, I can't make no statement about the hijackings. That'd be cutting my own throat. You got me in the middle. I think you got yourself in the middle, Gray. Give me a... Give me a little time to think it over, will you? How much time? Uh, a couple of days, that's all. Okay, I'll give you a couple of days. But in the meantime, you call off those hoodlums. I don't want any more shooting scrapes. Yeah, yeah. Sure. And get Burley and the Gimp to do the same. Or they know what to expect. Okay, Lieutenant, okay, the gorillas are through. And today. So long. Hey, I thought I was getting out. When your lawyer gets here with a writ, not before. We'll be seeing you. Well, that's a fine way to treat a guy. I'm an American citizen, you know. I get some rights even if I am I never see anything like this anyway. It's too bad you got to bargain with a guy like that, Lieutenant. Bargain? Yeah. I only wish we could leave him in a cell and throw the key away. There's no bargain to it, Sergeant. Oh, no? Huh. I've got an idea. As soon as those hoodlums stop protecting the bookies' messengers, the hijackers go back to work. Ah, yeah. We catch them in the act and wash this whole case up. And I want to do the catching, Lieutenant. Yes, Sergeant. So do I. Now, back to gangbusters. But I'm telling you, Gray, it ain't safe without protection. You just go ahead and make your collections, Rigo. I'll tell you what's safe. Trip to Mexico ought to be safe. Look, boss, so we ain't been bothered in two weeks. That's because we had that protection. You take those muscle men off and that hijacking crowd will be right back heisting You don't think these guys have been waiting around here, do you? They're probably in California or up in the mountains or someplace. Just make your collections, Rito. Leave the brain work to us. I'm getting sick of your wisecrack, Stella. Who asked you to listen? Listen here, you All are... right, all right, all right. That's enough out of both of you. Get out and get that dough, Rigo. I got bigger troubles on my mind. Sit down, Luke. Well, it's like you figured. They all got rid of the gorillas. You sure? Would I be telling you if I wasn't? I tell that Rigo guy all day there was nobody with him. The same goes for the others. Good. When they get back to work. And we'll take more of them over now than ever. You know something, Luke? What? Don't tell anybody. We're the only guys that ever beat the bookies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and when you got a sure thing, press it. That's exactly what we're going to do. Listen, Rico, I'm scared. If the cops don't take me for bookmaking, maybe the high trackers get me. I'm scared. Well, what do you got to be scared about? Look at me. I'm the guy they've been heisting. Uh, from the delicatessen business, maybe. I don't make so much money, but I live longer. Ah, forget it, will you? Let's see your sheets. I got to get some more. A customer. Yes, sir, mister. Can I help you? Well, I'll wait till you get finished with the other gentleman. For me, I'm just a salesman. Go ahead. Uh, what do you have, mister? Uh, you got any imported Roquefort cheese yet? Mm, no, but I got domestic blue cheese. No, no thanks. Wife wants imported. Much obliged. Well, you try again in a couple of days. I expect some imported. Yeah, I will. Thanks. <laughs> well, Sergeant. That's Rigo in there, all right, Lieutenant. That, that Gus must be taking bets for Gray. Yeah, yeah, I'd say he was. Make a note of the gambling squad. Yeah, I'll tell him. Now, what about Rigo? Well, wait till he comes out of the delicatessen and pick up his trail. Okay, Kale. There's Rigo. All right, park the car, quick. Now, you all know your job? Yeah, sure. All right, we'll run him into that alley. Let's go. I'll talk to him. All right, Rigo. Hey. Oh, not again. Get that alley. 
Look, guys. Get in there. Hey, listen, punch, punch. Don't you guys know when to stop? We haven't even started yet, pal. You can tell your boss that. Okay, this is far enough. All right. See what he's got on. Pleasure. You guys ought to have more sense. Shut up. Hold still, you, before I take a poke at you. All you men, stand up. What cops? Stand up. Give it to them. Stuck. Come on, up the alley. Let's go. There they go, officer. They went up the alley. Are you all right, Rico? Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. And stay here till we get back. Come on, Sergeant. Okay. Hold it. Up against the building. Right. This alley's a dead end. Yeah, yeah, I know. They can't get through. They've got to be waiting up at the end. Well, let's get them. All right, Sergeant. Stick close to the building and take it easy. Right with you. Okay. Hold it here a second. Yeah. All right, you men. Come out of there with your hands up. Come out of there right now. Not me, Chopper. Watch it. Stick here, Sergeant. Where are you going? There's that loading platform across the way. I should be able to see him from behind that. They may get you going across. Cover me with some shots. That'll keep their heads down. Right. Now... You okay, Lieutenant? Fine. Come out of there, you men. Not in your life. All right, Sergeant. Hold it, hold it, will you? That's enough, Sergeant. We're coming out there, Coach. All right, come out with your hands in the air. All of you. Watch him, Lieutenant. Don't you clap it. Don't you give up. Don't you. Just keep walking. Quit, Rook. Where else, Rook? That's far enough. I keep your hands up, you. They're up. Well, they're a fine-looking bunch, eh, Lieutenant? Look, we didn't do nothing wrong. We only took from the gamblers. They're criminals. We didn't do nothing wrong. You're a little bit twisted, fellow. You're all wrong. That doesn't make the bookies right. And if it's any satisfaction to you, we'll get them, too. Now, let's go. So, Don, the hijack gang was broken up. And its members were sent to the penitentiary for long terms. I'm sorry I can't say the same for the big-time gamblers whose money runners they robbed. But right now, they're sealing their own fate. Such operators are not satisfied with their enormous profits, feeling beyond the reach of the law enforcement agencies. It's their greed and lust for more profits that eventually will send them to the penitentiary for attempting to fix athletes and sporting events. Thank you, Commissioner Sullivan, for a most enlightening case. Commissioner Sullivan was impersonated by Robert Dryden. This is Don Gardner speaking. Gangbusters is a Phillips H. Lord production.